Okay, welcome to another Simple Engineering Snippet. In this instructional video, we are going to be investigating how a pressure wave interacts with junctions and looking at the resulting transmitted waves and reflective waves. I hope you find it useful. Okay, so here's the situation for a three-pipe junction. I have an incoming wave denoted as delta H and interacts with this three-pipe junction and there'll be transmitted waves in the uh, downstream pipes and a reflective wave uh, in the... Uh, in the pipe with the incident wave. Now the basis for this is Joukowsky uh, equation which I've derived in a, uh, another video and it tells me that the head increase due to a change in flow uh, is equal to the change in flow times the celerity divided by the acceleration of gravity and the pipe area. Now the uh, now the grouping of celerity celerity divided by gravitational times acceleration that accounts for the uh, compressibility of the liquid and the elasticity of the pipe. And we're going to refer to it as the elastic factor and give it the symbol F. And in general, F could be different in each one of the uh, pipes at the junction. And we will be writing a Joukowsky uh, equation as uh, delta H is equal to F times delta Q. Okay, let's uh, do a little bit of a review of waves and keep in mind that even though I call them pressure waves we are dealing with a piezometric head or head and uh, they can be positive or negative and as an example is that we have an open valve with flow through it at time is equal to zero and then consider the case at time is equal to zero plus we slam shut the valve and that brings the flow to zero on each side of the valve now we're going to be ignoring the possibility of uh, cavitation and vapor formation downstream of this uh, but when you slam the valve shut, the flow is initially brought to zero at the very least, and there is a negative pressure wave uh, propagating to the right, and that's what's going to be bringing the flow to zero. And on the left side of the valve, or the upstream side of the valve in this case, uh, the flow again is zero. There will be a positive pressure wave propagating to the left, and that's what's going to be bringing the flow to zero. And again, both of these expressions can be uh, calculated with the Joukowsky relation. Uh, it's clear that the uh, wave propagating downstream of the valve uh, must be negative to bring the flow to zero, but uh, maybe sometimes we get turned around. So let's uh, review how we can always determine the uh, impact that a pressure wave has on flow. Two simple rules, and that is that the wave direction defines positive, and delta Q in the Joukowsky equation is defined as the flow at the back of the wave minus the flow in front of the wave. And let's work an example here to help clarify what I mean by that. So we have a pressure wave, delta H, and it's going with the flow. Uh, but what I'm going to be calling positive, which is going to be the science for the flow, is going to be in the same direction as the wave. And so here's Joukowsky's equation. And so it's the flow behind the wave. And it's flowing in the same direction as the wave positive, so hence the positive sign, minus the flow in front of the wave. And again, that flow is in the positive direction. Simplifying, we can solve for the change in flow rate delta Q. And that is equal to uh, the change in head or the strength of the wave divided by the elastic factor. And uh, note that delta Q could be uh, positive or could be negative depending on the sign of the actual uh, pressure wave. Let's work a similar example, but now we have a pressure wave traveling to the right, which is in the opposite direction of the actual flow. But again, we're going to define positive to be in the direction of the wave. And so writing Joukowsky equation, it looks very similar. Uh, it's the flow behind the wave. So again, Q plus delta Q, but now that flows in the opposite direction of the wave. So we have the minus sign, which I've denoted in red, minus the flow in front of the wave, which is Q, again, that is in the minus direction, hence the minus sign, simplifying the negative signs, and I can solve for delta Q is equal to minus delta H over the elastic factor. Again, delta Q could be positive or negative, depending on the sign of the pressure wave. Okay, so we're going to be using this uh, over and over again as we derive the transmission and reflection factors, so I hope uh, this... Uh, uh, is not confusing. Okay, so what do we mean by a junction? We have a pressure wave incident on a junction. Well, a junction could be a change in diameter, as shown. It could be a multi-pipe junction, you know, three pipes, four pipes. 
or it could be a junction between just two pipes. Well, this doesn't look like a junction, but this would be the case where maybe uh, the celerity changes in pipe two. It's from pipe one, and therefore the elasticity of the uh, pipe is going to change, and that is going to result in a both a transmitted wave and a reflective wave. Now, what is not a junction, let's say we have this pipeline and uh, I've identified nodes where I want calculations to be performed depending on the analysis method. Uh, we might need a lot of the nodes in between, maybe not. Uh, but at the very least, this is all the same pipe, the same elastic factor, and there are no branches or anything like that. And so none of these are junctions and we would not expect a uh, transmit wave or reflective wave uh, to be altering the waves as a, as a wave would travel to, through any of these points. Okay, so let's uh, start with our uh, three pipe junction and let's call the uh, pipe on the left pipe number one, on the right pipe number two, and the one going vertical is pipe number three. And I also have identified a little control volume at the intersection of the pipes and this is our uh, steady state flows we have pipe we have flow coming in from pipe number one and it splits off and goes to pipe number three and pipe number two let's uh satisfy continuity equation that needs to be satisfied okay and we're also going to denote the head of the junction and we're going to be ignoring minor losses so the head of the junction is going to be valid for the entrance to all three of our pipes. And let's go over our subscripts uh, to our flows. The first subscript identifies the pipe that it's in, so pipe number one. And the su second subscript identifies the number of wave interactions. There are different ways to do this. All of them get a little bit messy, but I'm hoping this will be methodical and it'll be easy to pass along. So all these flows have the second subscript of being zero because there's been no uh, wave interaction. Okay, so let's take the same pipe, and now we have an incoming wave of strength delta H. And you'll notice behind the wave, it's still the flow is still in pipe number one, and now it's had one uh, wave interaction. Okay, well, using my uh, wave flow Joukowsky equation, uh, I can write down the strength of delta H and solve that for the flow uh, behind the wave. I'm going to box that equation because we're going to be using that. And so now we have the situation where the incoming wave has impacted the junction. And now there are transmitted waves in pipe number two and pipe number three and a reflective wave going back into pipe number one. The head has changed from H0 to H1. And we've already solved for Q11 in terms of the initial flow and in the incoming wave and the elastic factor of F1. Let's look a little bit about to transmit waves and I'm going to uh, change the nomenclature a little bit and say the transmitted waves can be are equal to a transmission factor times the income strength of the incoming wave and for the reflective wave I'm going to say it's equal to a reflection factor times the incoming wave now h1 again we're ignoring losses so it's the same for this entire junction and that's going to be equal to the original head plus T2 times delta H, or the transmitted wave in pipe number two. And I can write the same equation for pipe number three. Again, ignoring minor losses, the head in this entire junction is the same. And since they are all the same, uh, we know that T2 is equal to T3 is just equal to T, which is the transmission. So the transmission factor is the same uh, for each of the downstream pipes. Okay, so now let's go ahead and solve for the uh, unknown flows in terms of the flows around the, the wave. And so Q12, which is the flow behind the reflective wave, is equal to the flow in front of it minus reflection factor times the incoming wave delta H over elastic factor number one, for pipe number one. And I can do similar type things for uh, flow Q21 and flow Q31. Okay, again, I know that the head at 1 is equal to H0 plus T, the transmission factor, times delta H. But looking at the reflective wave, it's equal to H0 
plus it had delta H coming in, so that's still there. And then it saw the reflective wave which with a strength of R times delta H. So that's how we get our second equation. We set these two equations equal to each other. And we can solve for the reflection factor is equal to the transmission factor minus 1. And this is always going to be true. Now, we don't know what the transmission factor is yet, but uh, or an expression for it. But once we do, we'll be able to determine the reflection factor. Okay, so initial conditions here in the uh, lower middle. Uh, the conditions that we have right now after the reflection and the transmission. Once again, we can satisfy continuity at the junction. And so that's still satisfied. And now we can uh, write our continuity equation in terms of the expressions for our known flow. Okay, so we have these. Saving uh, our expression for continuity. And so Q12, we have an expression for that. And we'll know Q11 because Q12 is in terms of Q11. And we have Q21, expression for Q21. And we have an expression for Q31. Uh, so combining those equations, uh, this is what we get for a continuity. Again, we want everything in terms of the initial flows or the strength of the incoming wave and the elastic factor. So we have an equation for Q11, substituting that in. And this is our expression. But you'll notice in this expression, we have our initial flows all represented. We have continuity equation, which uh, tells us that those cancel out. So I can go ahead and cancel those out, simplify the equation. And here I have it, and then we can just simplify it more because I see that I have delta H in all these terms. And so I can uh, cancel those out. And now I have an equation uh, with just the uh, reflective factor, the transmission factor, and the elasticities of the uh, pipes. And we'll already have an equation for the reflection factor. And so I can solve for what my transmission factor is. Now there's nothing sacred about a three-pipe junction. This would work with a four-pipe junction, etc. And so a more general expression is that the transmission factor is equal to 2 over the elastic factor for the pipe with the incoming wave, that is important, over the sum from 1 is i is equal to 1 to n of 1 over fi, where n is the number of connecting pipes. And again, pipe number 1, which goes in the numerator, uh, that is the elastic factor uh, for the pipe with the incident pressure wave. Okay, well, let's work through a simple example. In this example, we do have a junction. And uh, it is because the uh, pipe material has changed and the wave speed has changed. And for pipe number one, the elastic factor is 500. For pipe number two, it's equal to 400. I have an incoming wave of 100. Uh, let's call it 100 meters. If I say 100 feet, I get uh, centipede jokes. And uh, let's go ahead and calculate our transmission factor. Using the uh, previously determined equation, we get that the transmission factor is equal to 0 0.89. And then I can calculate the reflection factor, and it's equal to minus 0.11. So let's go ahead and look at the resulting flows in calculation. Using the uh, previous method, I can calculate the flow behind the incoming wave. And it's going this, this positive wave of 100 is going to increase the flow from 0.5 to 0.7. And the flow, the I'm sorry, the head behind the wave is going to increase from 150, add 100 to that, and get 250. And now let's look at the conditions uh, after the incoming wave has interacted with the junction, and we have a transmitted wave and a reflective wave. If we've done everything correctly, the flows behind the wave should all be the same, and the head behind the wave should all be the same. So let's check that out. Okay, again, uh, the reflective wave has not impacted uh, the flow on the uh, far left-hand side, so it's still equal to 0 0.7. And now let's calculate the flow behind the transmitted wave using the same methodology as before. And the transmitted wave is 0 0.89 times 100, or 89, and we get a flow of 0 0.72. 
now let's calculate the flow behind the reflected wave using the same procedure. It's equal to 0 0.7 minus the strength of the reflective wave, which is minus 11 over F1. And I see I have an algebraic error here. Let me go ahead and correct that. That should be a minus 11. And once again, I get 0 0.72. Now, looking at the head to the left of the junction, I started off with 150. It saw the incoming wave of 100, so that takes it up to 250. But then it's reduced by 11, so that's 239. Looking at the head to the right of the junction, it started off at 150. And it sees a head increase of 89, which again is 239. And so we're satisfying the head requirement and the continuity requirement at the junction. Okay, well, let's look at a couple of special examples. And here is a dead end. And clearly, uh, nothing is going to be transmitted past the dead end. Uh, but we are interested in how a wave would reflect off of a dead end. And we can, we can use these uh, relations to determine that. So in this example, I'm going to say the area of pipe number two is equal to zero. And with that, its elastic factor is infinity. Calculating the transmission factor. And again, the only reason I want to be interested in the transmission factor is because I want to calculate the reflection factor. And I get, uh, well, 1 over infinity is 0, so I'm left with 2 over F1 over 1 over F1. So the transmission factor is equal to 2, which by itself isn't very useful, but now I can calculate the reflection factor. So that's equal to 1. And so an incoming wave uh, reflecting off of a dead end, it reflects with the same magnitude and the same sign. Now let's look at sort of the other extreme where I have a pipe connected to a very large tank or reservoir fixed grade. And in this case, we're going to say the area of pipe number two, which is the fixed grade node, is infinity. And therefore, my elastic factor is equal to zero. Once again, going to my equation for the transmission factor, I've got, well, one over zero is infinity. I got infinity in the uh, denominator, a finite number in the numerator. So that's equal to zero. I can still calculate my reflection factor, and that's going to be equal to negative 1. So an incoming wave to a, a large tank or reservoir, fixed grade, it's going to reflect with the uh, same magnitude but opposite sign. Okay, there are other ways to determine that, but uh, certainly these uh, correlations, equations, do work for these as well. Okay, well, that wraps up this presentation. I hope you uh, found it useful. Uh, if so, uh, please like and subscribe, but more importantly, have a great day.